everyone, this is Brad Cummings from BoardGameGeek.com. I'm here with Sebastian of Neocrux Games. Uh, you guys are here today showing off uh, your game Gala Collider. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the game? Sure, absolutely. Gala Collider is a 4X digital card game. It is an expandable game, not a collectible game. So when you're buying packs in the game, you'll be able to know exactly which cards you're getting. And also it's a free-to-play game too, so if you're a free-to-play player, you will get less packs of cards from what you earn from playing the game, and you'll have to make smart pack choices in what you want to purchase. So it sounds like you can, um, so there's kind of like a, a subscription type uh, service kind of going like on? A, I would call it more like a soft subscription model. Like there's going to be regular content releases that come in the game that are going to be on an interval that's predictable. So we'll have a cycle of uh, cards in a particular expansion series. And then we may have also a deluxe pack that comes out that introduces new features, or maybe a new location that you travel to on, in, the, in the galaxy, or a new faction that comes out. Cool. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the mechanics of the game, like what kind of the core gameplay is? Sure, absolutely. So it's a, a 4X genre kind of game. So you have your exploration, you're expanding, you're researching technology, you'll encounter one or more opponents, or if you're in the future we plan on also adding other modes like cooperative or raid, so depending on the scenario. And then you'll have a mid-game phase typically where you're, and, and so in that part of the game, You'll also be researching, or throughout the game, you'll be researching technologies that you want to bring into your deck. So you both do deck construction before you play, but you also build your technology pool of which cards you want to be able to research while you're playing. And so you'll make choices about which cards you want to bring in, maybe to counter an enemy strategy or to further your own strategies. And eventually it'll lead to a win condition. Our base game win conditions, we've got three win conditions right now. Either you capture, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, either you capture your opponent's home world, or you can simultaneously contest all of their systems by having ships in them. Or you can also win just by collecting enough stars, which we may change the name of that, but they're basically victory points. And that you could be accumulating through more passive diplomatic means, or maybe you're building wonders or something like that. So there's different ways that you can also build decks and play the game. And it looks like um, it's on Mac here that we're seeing it. Um, and I, are there other platforms planned beyond that? Uh, yes, we plan on releasing initially on Mac and PC Windows, and then also on iOS on iPad. And then depending on the level of interest and also how well the Kickstarter does, we plan on also releasing on Android devices and also on mobile devices too. That's really cool. Um, so you are planning a Kickstarter. Can you tell us a little bit about that, kind of the timing and when you're expecting that? Sure, so our current uh, target date for the Kickstarter is going to be towards the very end of August. If it changes, it'll just be by a week, so it's, gonna, it's pretty going to be pretty close to the end of August right now is what we're aiming for. And um, uh, did you want more details about that? Or? I'm just, yeah, I mean, so people can look for the end of August. I'm assuming they'll be able to buy in the digital game, maybe different levels of content and that kind of thing. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be giving some really good deals on our Kickstarter, depending on how much you pledge, uh, anywhere from like 25% up to, I believe, our highest tier is like 70% off on content, which would essentially give you more than a year of content in a whole bunch of factions. Um, so we're hoping the really good deal also makes it exciting for people to back into our project. And uh, I should also mention that if you sign up for our newsletter before the Kickstarter happens, we'll send you an email on the day of the Kickstarter, and you'll also qualify, that email address will also qualify for extra bonus content too. So a little extra perk there. So can you just head to your website to sign up for that? Yeah, if you go to our website, which is galacollider.com, so G-A-L-A -A, Collider, then uh, right there on the homepage, there's a big sign-up form. You can type your email address in. Uh, so I know we had to <laughs> get online to play here. Um, so is there also AI play, or is it mainly going to be multiplayer focused? So the core of the game, we wanted to make sure that it had a really good one-on-one -on -one play game as its kind of baseline. The AI for a campaign mode is something that we would love to add in the future. But um, again, it also depends on how much funding we pull in, what the interest is of players. If a lot of players want to have an AI mode then, or a, a campaign mode, then we'll prioritize that. But right now, it's not our highest priority. We want to make sure at its core that we have that one versus one play working really well. Then from there, we can add on multiplayer, free-for-all, team games, etc.
Uh, turns are simultaneous, I should, it may be worth mentioning as well. So it's very scalable. So we could have a map with eight players or um, assuming that it's, we don't hit any technical burdens, we could have a game with like 20 or 30 players, you know, so we'll see what that maximum is. But in theory, because the turns are simultaneous, um, if you're playing with a timed clock, that'll be a mode that you can do with. Then, let's say your turns are two minutes or five minutes. It doesn't matter how many people are playing. That's your clock to do your turn in. So it makes it very friendly to doing also multiplayer battles. That kind of scalability sounds really awesome. I also like the idea you were saying that it is kind of a, a collectible card game in that you're building decks beforehand, but then your deck can actually change throughout the course of a game. Yeah. It's a really neat mechanic. Um, are those changes kind of permanent? Are those cards that stay in your deck? Are those kind of per game changes that happen? Uh, well, it's so you, when you're doing your deck construction before the game, you build your core deck, and then you do pre-select your tech pool, which is your sideboard, effectively, that you're buying cards from. We do, in the future, plan on adding other mechanics where you're able to uh, play spies, for example, to see what the opponent's researching, or to maybe even steal some other technology for your own. Uh, because it's a digital game, there's no problem with moving cards around between players. Um, there's also ideas to be, to, to the, the design space is really big for the future of this game. So we could also have more like shops or structures that you build that themselves also offer you in-game options for what new cards you want to bring into the game to give you even more flexibility of how you want to play. So it's kind of a hybrid of deck construction and deck building. But, and also with a, si a sideboard-esque tech pool that you're able to access in-game much more easily than in other games too, that gives you kind of a dynamic play option. So we're pulling in a lot of different ideas and some novel ideas and seeing, you know, trying to create the best kind of combination. And um, oh, one more thing about the deck modification is when you play certain types of cards that are physical things, so if I play a ship from my hand, it'll actually modify itself into a 3D model on the map, on the star map that you move around. And that card is actually left my deck. So you can also, you're also in-game modifying the consistency, the quality of the quantity of cards in your hand in your deck just by playing them too. So your deck will be morphing based on what you want it to, to, to become as you're playing. It sounds really awesome and looks like there's like a lot of deep mechanics involved. Um, Thank you so much for sharing it with us, and we'll be sure to check out that Kickstarter uh, later this August, I guess. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being on Board Game Geek.